Today we're going to talk about the 2019 EfficientNet Rethinking Model Scaling for Convolutional Neural Networks. This is the work from Min Xin Tan, uh, Kwok V. Lee. This is my personal reading notes. What I want to achieve is to bring you the high-level concept of this paper EfficientNet. So EfficientNet is re really talking about a systematic way to analyze um, the, the model scaling. So it's a scaling analysis. This paper is just about the scaling analysis. And we're trying to understand um, how to scale the model up in terms of depth, width, and resolution. And what we mean by that, because we have the problem. We, what is the problem we have? We, we understand from the previous empirical experience, we understand that we can scale up the model in terms of depth. Here means depth means more layers, for example, like ResNet. We know that from uh, Resonant 18 to, to 50 to 152, we have a better improvement of the performance. We know that because the increase the layers, you have a more receptive field size, and then you can learn uh, a better represent, representation for specific task. And from, from the width, right, we also know that we can increase more channels. So we have more filters, and we can find out more fine-grained information of the specific task as well. We know that increasing channels help to the performance in the end. And of course, from the from the beginning, right, the resolution would help because if you have a better resolution from at the beginning, and also along the way you are doing the, your your uh, down sampling, if you have a better resolutions, you can you can find out more details of your task. So we all know that these three things helps, but we have no we we don't have a systematic way to understand how to scale them up, like a, um, coupling them to scale them up together. And that is exactly the proposal from this paper. And that um, uh, efficient net, this paper pr proposed a compound scaling method, try to uniformly scale the network in terms of the width and depth resolution. So the width here again is more channels, Depth here is more layers, and resolution is just resolution. And here, this slide just provides some text, um, just tell you what is the empirical um, experience from the previous across the scale up depth, width, and resolution. I already mentioned the depth is we know that more layers like ResNet, we, we have a better receptive field size and for the representation of the task. And the width, uh, it's good that usually on a small size network, so we can increase the channels to learn more uh, representation of that. And the third one is a resolution. You can you can read through th those texts here, but uh, I, I think you already get the high level understanding. And really the problem is when we look at the, the performance, if this diagram shows the performance of you scale up uh, independently of the, for example, the, the, the left one is the width. If you increase in the channel, you can see this W increase from 1.0 to the end 5.0, and you see the saturations of the performance, meaning that if you only scale, if you only scale the width, increase more channels, you will have the saturation of your performance and same applies to uh, depth, more layers in the middle, this diagram, you see the saturations of your performance, and then in the right uh, for the resolution. So if you only scale up one of them, then you will find out the performance saturation pretty fast. And this diagram is trying to provide you intuitions of the, the problem we just mentioned, right? Uh, let me try to explain this. Maybe at the beginning, this is hard to understand. What does it mean? So the first one is called baseline. And the baseline, and you see that uh, baseline basically is just our reference, right? So in this diagram, the, how they represent it is, let's, let's take a look here. The first is a channel. So that is what we call uh, the width, right? Because um, more channels, you will see uh, this will be longer later. Okay, 
and this is just a uh, specific layers this is another layers things like that you can re uh, like this and the resolution a representative like uh, using this this 1d means uh, the resolution uh, the high times the width okay so if you see B we increase the width means that our channels go uh, our channels increase so you see the diagram is in expanding in a horizontal way right? So the increased width, increased the channel means this goes wider and then applies to all the layers, right? This layer goes wider, wider, things like that. And the C is the depth scaling. We say depth means the layers. So you just apply more layers. You see the layer increase, the channels stay the same. The channel stay the same because they only increase the width. Uh, the depth, which is the layers. Okay, the third is the resolution, and we talk about the resolution is the 1D here. So the resolution increase means this this uh, diagram gets longer, get taller, right? So only get taller, the layers remain the same, the channel remain the same. So these three represent um, if you scale independent of the channels, the layer, the resolution, and this is how it looks like. And what efficient net trying to provide is a compound analysis to combine all of them. Meaning you have higher resolutions, you get taller on this diagram, you have deeper layers, you have more layers. You see here more layers, and then you have wider um, channels. So this is what the efficient net trying to achieve to compoundly scaling three of these factors. Okay, so what is the efficient net? Efficient net is you, they use a neural architecture search, which we call NAS, to design a baseline model, what we showed before. We first find out a baseline model, and then we scale it up based on the, the uh, compound scaling. Later we will talk about the detail. And later we will also try to explain why it used the neural architecture search. So just try to remember the efficient net is based on a NAS, a way of designing the baseline model. And then you can scale it up based on the compound analysis later. And that is what people call efficient net family. So the compound on modeling scaling is um, here is a little bit complex information, but what it provides information is very intuitive. If you see the first diagram, uh, first formula here is just telling you just first, you need to recall the ResNet. If you don't understand the ResNet, then please check my the other videos. I'm talking about the ResNet. So basically, we know that in the current architectures, right, like a ResNet, you have a lot of stage. So this one to S means stage. What 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 is this stage doing is basically um, they repeat the same layers of architectures. So they just copy paste exactly the same patterns of layers. So here just your patterns of layers, right? This transformation function is just a bunch of layers and layers exactly here. And what you actually um, implement inside is just you see edge is your width, uh, your high and your width of the image, and that is the resolution. And then C is the channel size. So what you're trying to do of this compound scaling is exactly the right hand side here. You remember if we touch the the depth means more layers, and then we will have some multiplier here, um, which is affect the layers. And this is what we call, we make it deeper, or we change the resolution of the uh, width and high, and that's a resolution R multiplier here. And of course, we have another one, which is width. In this case, we mean more channels. Don't, don't get confused. Uh, the width terminology here is not about the width of the image, because we talk about the image, we're always using the terminology resolution. In here, the width is always talking about the channels. Okay, so this W means width and means 
channels, number of channels. So what we're trying to do is from the original um, um, convolutional neural network standards one, these architectures, and then we touch the layers, the resolution, and the channels. This is what we want to do exactly like this. So you can read through the text, but the high level concept is here. And of course, what we're trying to achieve is we need to have a good accuracy of the result. Second thing is we need to make sure because when you touch those things, you increase your memory, you increase your flops. You need more computational power for that. So you need to be careful how to scale them and also within the restriction, within the boundary of your uh, memory and computational um, cost. So that brings up the compound modeling scaling, which is um, we try to scale the depth, means the layers, the channels, the resolution in a systematic way. And this is what we call this uh, compound analysis. You have the, the depth equal to alpha and with the, um, the phi in, 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 in a, a subscript, uh, upper script here. So the idea here is just you have, you, you see always you have alpha, um, you have a phi, which is what we call the compound if coefficient in your um, formula across the depth, the width, and the resolution. So what you want to find out is those coefficients, what is alpha, beta, and, and gamma, and what is a phi of them. And of course, then you know that in to compute this problem, right, you need to give certain boundary condition. And here is exactly the boundary condition. We want to restrict um, the alpha times the square of the beta and square of the gamma equal to two. And then we also want to make sure that alpha is bigger or equal to one, so as beta and gamma. And the result for that is quite intuitive, right? We will talk about this later, but for the alpha and beta and gamma is quite intuitive because you always, you want to scale up your model, right? So you always need to bigger or equal than then one, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. So um, the idea why this formula, why this formula you need to, um, I borrowed the, the pictures from my another video mobile net here. So if you understand that the convolutional, um, standard convolutional operations, you have the computational cost here. So I will try to explain, but you can go back, refer to the video of the mobile net, which I will also paste in the description. Um, the DK subscript K here means the kernel size. So that is your three by three windows. And the M is your input channel, which uh, in this paper's terminology in the efficient net terminology that we call the width, right? But we, we just call them about the channels. So the channels of the input, and this is the channels of the output. And this also means how many numbers of features you want to apply on this specific um, layers, right? And the DF here means the resolution of the input size. So if you see here that you understand what touch the width has a square factor and what touch the resolution has a square factor. And that is exactly the square factor here. And if you increase the depth, means you increase the number of layers, you would just have a um, 1x um, effect on the whole formula. So we're trying to restrict here this text. You can read that. If you scale up um, the depth, the width, and the resolution, your flops will be proportional to the d and then square off the width, which is the square of the channel and square of the resolution. And that is exactly because of this concept here. And what we're trying to do is we want to make this into exponential uh, relationships. So we know that if we can constrain these three factors uh, close or approximate to two, then we know that if we tune them with the coefficient phi here, we will increase the flops by two power of five. 
So that is exactly what we want to understand when we touch the scaling of the model, how many ex extra computational power we will need. And that is why we have the constraint here, uh, this constraint is talking about. Okay. So the the idea, the idea of the using the the baseline model, right? You can read here. So the efficient net, it tried to do first. Uh, we, we talked about before. He used a NAS to search uh, the good baseline. And why we doing that is because if you remember from our previous slides, we only touch, we only touch the depth, width, and resolution. But what we don't touch is the transform functions. So if I go back to one more slide here, we have transformation function here. So this transformation function means the design of your architecture, means how many, uh, what kind of three by three convolutional you will have, or you have another one by one convolution, is the design. We don't touch the design itself, but we touch um, the depth, width, and the resolution. Meaning that we need to find out a good baseline because having a good baseline is very important. And once you have that good baseline, you can scale up with the approach we just talked about before. So in order to have the optimum result, we need to find out a good baseline. And this good baseline, what we can use is exactly the neural architecture search. So the efficient net baseline is using these techniques and to find out one architecture is looked like this. And that is, um, in short, as the title here, the baseline model of the efficient net is the mobile com inverted bottleneck plus squeeze and excitation. So if you don't understand this, what 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 it happened? You can go back to the other videos. I have one video for mobile net and one video for squeeze and excitation. You can check that. But the difference here is this mobile inverted bottleneck is the mobile net v2. I have only the video for mobile net v1 at the moment, but probably we're going to talk about mobile net v2 in the future. But first idea is you you always need to understand the mobile net v1 first so the mobile net v2 you can just think of it's the extended version of the mobile net v1 and what mobile net v1 do is uh, using this depth wise separable convolution operations you please go back to check that video otherwise you will get lost what i'm talking about here the essential idea for that paper is to find out a way to reduce uh, the parameters and the latencies. So that's that's the same goal here. We're trying to find out the optimum, the better baseline model first for our efficient net. And then later we can scale up based on the previous uh, compound scaling analysis we have, right? So this is this architecture using NAS to find it out, we call efficient net B0, which is the baseline. And that is from the mobile net V2 and also squeeze and excitation. And then we're going to apply our previous uh, um, formula here. So here the step is very important because what I'm talking about until now, you understand that, okay, we have a baseline. Okay, we have another approach. We're going to scale it up. But how, how you do in reality, in practical, is the key, right? So the, the step, there's a two step of achieving that. The first step is we're going to fix the phi equal to one. So phi equal to one that we understand, uh, we can use the, we can use the grid search to find out what is the optimum accuracy. And that is what we want to achieve. So why once we have, we know that phi equal to one, and we also have the boundary condition of them, then we can find out that the alpha, beta, and gamma, what is the value they should be. So first we fix phi, and then we find out the coefficient of alpha, beta, and gamma. And then we fix alpha, beta, and gamma, we scaled up the phi. So we scaled up the phi, we obtain like 
uh, efficient at baseline one to baseline seven. So we can we can tune this five and have a different result, right? So what does that mean is a good performance result, of course, right? Otherwise you won't do that. You have a baseline here. You can see the number of parameters is less and then the accuracy you can have is high. So the idea, the, the result of the efficient net is it can achieve under the certain constraint of the parameters, the better result compared to the previous model. So you always try to compute your parameters with the same group of, per, of, of the network, right? So you compare your efficient at baseline zero with the NAS net. And then you can compute, for example, if you have ResNet 50 here, you have maybe 23 millions of parameters you can comp compare with efficient like B4, B5, and you can you, you see that under the certain parameters, you have much better um, accuracy. And that is exactly the, the result shown here. You're always trying to compute the parameter in the same group, or you can also compare the accuracy in the same group then you know that how many how much parameter you can reduce right so in this diagram in this paper we tr they trying to compare the efficient from b0 we know that b0 is our baseline model and b1 is when we fix the alpha beta gamma and we increase the phi which is our uh, the power uh, of our baseline right then we can scale up this five and to attempt the bigger model, of course your parameters will increase, but your coefficient, uh, your, your final accuracy will also increase. Okay, so this is what efficient I can achieve, but also efficient, uh, if you can also use in this same concept, right? Same concept to scale up the already exist baseline model. So you can take mobile net, or you can take ResNet, apply the same techniques to scale the already exist network here. So here means that you 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 don't use the baseline efficient net baseline model anymore. You use the mobile net as a, your baseline, and then you scale this up uh, based on our previous compound analysis. And of course, you have a more flops. You have a more computation because you scale them up but you are also uh, having the better accuracy. So the idea of this um, table is try just trying to tell you, you can use the same technique, which is this compound scale, uh, compound scaling to apply on the existing model. And if you apply on the efficient net B0 model, then you can uh, receive the result here. So just try to do a short recap. What we have is a systematic way to scale up the across the layers, the channels, and the resolution. And how you do that is you have this compound model scaling. You apply this compound model scaling to whatever baseline model you have, either on the efficient at B0 or you can apply that on mobile net, or you can apply that on the uh, rest net. So because of this baseline model is so important, you need to make sure you find out a good baseline model and efficient net, what you find, how you find out a good baseline model, which we call efficient net B0 is using NAS. And then this baseline model is composed of the mobile inverted bottleneck plus the squeeze and excitation. And you, when you use that as a baseline model to scale your model up, which you attempt the efficient aid B1, B2, until B7, and that outperform the other uh, relative same models with the parameters, you can have the much higher accuracy, or if you have the same accuracy of model, you can have much less of parameters. And that is the contribution of this paper. That's all. Thank you.